Hello and welcome to PVTV News. I'm Brandy. And I am Rylan. Thanks for checking us out. Our first story. A water bottle banned in national parks has been lifted in 2011. National parks started a new program that would stop the sales of water bottles aiming to reduce pollution and it actually worked. However, the Trump administration is scraping it. The ban prevented what is estimated to, to be 112 pounds of plastic being sold and discarded each year and stopped the risen, rising of up into metric tons of carbon dioxide. Hurricane Maria struck Puerto Rico on September 20th as a Category 4 storm with winds of 155 miles per hour, the strongest to hit the island in a century. It, it destroyed the entire electricity grid while grinding up homes, businesses, roads, and farms. At least 16 people died and nearly all its people were left without power and most without water. The death toll, toll is expected to rise. The aftermath of the storm resulted in a near total shutdown of the U.S. territory's wealth that could last for weeks and has many people running seriously low on water, diesel fuel, gas, and cash, and worrying that it will become even harder to survive on the storm-ravaged island. When Chris Ton was a Department of Defense contractor in the early 1990s, the Air Force asked him to think of something that could de-ice its airfields around the world. Heavy cargo aircraft were he couldn't use any salt or de-icing chemicals because of the concrete. Tuan had studied how to use steel fibers to reinforce concrete. He run a low voltage electric current through the steel to heat the runway so the snow and ice can just melt off of the surface. Murray has come a long way since his early days on Saturday Night Live. He had he made screwball comedies like Caddy Shack and Stripes. Then he made a serious made serious films like Lost and Translation. His latest project is New Worlds, an album where he sings and reads American classics accompanied by a classical excuse me, trio. It was created with the help of John Volger, a German cellist and Murray's creative partner. According to Volger, the two met at an airport, specifically at security. Bill started making comments on my cello. Volger says, I think he was a little surprised that I was trying to carry that huge baggage into the airplane. Murray says he asked the real question, are you going to be able to fit that thing in the overhead compartment? So the two struck up a friendship and then they decided to put out an album. One selection on, Murray, on New Worlds finds Murray reading a passage from Huckleberry Finn. The text feels relevant to this moment when many Americans are reflecting on what it means to be an American and revisiting the legacy of the Civil War, and Murray says these themes from Huckleberry Finn resonate with his musical group. The control room of one of the Navy's most submarines is full of the latest technology. It has sophisticated computers, flat screen monitors, and sailors who grew up playing video games. It looks a bit like a video game arcade and not just because of the high resolution graphics. The Navy is beginning to use Xbox 360 controllers to operate the periscope aboard Virginia class submarines. Periscopes are the peepholes that can see out of the top of the submarine. The controls are the same as the 
ones you can find in the mall for the game system, the Xbox controllers also is so f cheaper. The company says the hand grips image control panel that cost $38,000 can be replaced with an Xbox controller that typically cost less than $30. As adult green sea turtles eat a mostly veggie diet, they graze on algae, prune sea grass beds, and underwater land landscapers. However, juveniles often prey on invertebrates, including easy to nip jellyfish. The six skin turtles appear to be immune to the stinging tentacles of the most venomous species. Sue McGrew creates amazing pieces of art that often last just a few weeks. Sometimes they appear in a day. A soaking rain, for example, can wash away several hours of work in minutes. That's the life of a professional sand sculptor. McGrew has practiced this art from using sand, water, and a few hand tools. Since high school now, she travels the world for competitions and other events. What began as my hobby has become my passion, says the 31-year-old from Seattle, Washington. Although she also carves ice and snow, I love to express myself in sand. The magic is in the medium. It's something every kid, every adult has played in at the beach, she says. People don't relate in the same way to a bronze or marble sculpture, but sand, it really captures their attention. And what those people really want to know is if she's sad when it all goes away. Yes and no, McGrew says. It's part of the job knowing her sculptures won't last long. The joy is that people experience it with you in the moment. It's like a good Thanksgiving dinner. You wouldn't want to keep it around forever. Fortunately, there are photos, images of giant castles fetching mermaids, storybook characters, and mythological creatures abound on her website. Some of these air artworks took shape in a day, while others took a few weeks. A grave has been found in the Viking Age village of Burka, Sweden, and was found to contain the remains of a shield maiden. In other words, a female Viking warrior, and not just any warrior, but a senior one. She has found buried with a sword and battle axe, a spear, armor piercing arrows, a battle knife, and two shields and two horses, along with game pieces that resemble chest pieces that she was a battle planner. Hundreds of children separated from their beloved teddy bears are being given the chance to be reunited under an innovative launched by Glasgow Airport on Thursday. The Scottish Airport published a video lineup of its lost teddy collection and invited children to identify and reclaim their soft toys. Lost teddies at Glasgow Bear Airport. Glasgow Airport is asking the public to pause for a moment and help it reunite lost cuddly toys with their owners. The airport said they recovered hundreds of soft toys from two foot high blue monsters to tiny cuddlies. To make, more, to make sure more don't go astray, it was imp important to the airport to introduce a teddy tag given to any child traveling from the airport with a soft toy. We, we're just softies really and we're doing everything we can to make sure more bears don't get mislaid. It explained we can't bear for any more teddies to go missing. Every week for the past 12 years, he has come to cuddle and whisper words of encouragement to the tiniest babies in this hospital's intensive care unit. And for his dedication, he is known as the ICU gran grandpa. David Dutchman holds the babies whose parents can't be with them on the day at on that day at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. By the, by the mother of one of the baby boys was posted on the facility's Facebook page and earned the senior Mancho public adoration. It was a typical story. A preemie born at just 25 weeks had been in the hospital for six weeks, and because his mother needed to take care 
of her daughter, she had to go home every night and each morning she would drive the two hours back to the ICU feeling anxious because he's likely been missing his mommy. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching PVTV. We will be back next week with more news for you.